All right, well, one of the things that never ceases to amaze me when I really stop and think about it for a minute is that this Jeep we're working on here, this old CJ5 rolled off the assembly line in the year 1977. So it is now the year 2022. So you can do the math. Um, I can't do that in my head, but that was a long time ago. And uh, it just amazes me that you can take things like the frame that's had all those years and has been over all the trails that I've taken this thing on in Southern Colorado and Utah and all that, all that abuse it's taken. And it's really held up pretty darn well. A little bit of sand, sanding, a little bit of primer and some paint, and it's good as new. Um, a case in point, our flex fan here had a little bit of rust on it, a little bit of red paint. We're going to continue on on that, get that cleaned up, and make it blue in the center there to match the rest of our block. And um, there's days when I wish we could do that with people. We could just take us old units in the shop and sand us down a little bit, paint us up, put some fresh parts on, and roll us out good as new. But unfortunately, when the technology comes along that allows us to do that, I'm sure it's going to be very expensive and I ain't going to have any money left over because I've spent it all on this silly Jeep. I do have one more box that came in from our good boys at Summit Racing. Not a sponsor of this video, but they should be because I've spent enough money with them that they ought to be ho hooking me up. So you boys in the marketing department at Summit Racing, if you want to get a hold of me, um, Please reach out. <laughs> anyway, this is not a big box. Uh, not a ton of stuff in there. It's things like the hose clamps and the various little pieces and parts you need under the hood to keep that process going along. So I will keep that process going along. I will get my attention back to those brake lines coming up from the factory lines up to that portioning valve I showed you last time. I'm not gonna mess around with that brass valve that was down on the frame. But I think just some female to female unions will get me tied into those existing brake lines and then we'll come up and we'll figure out our adapters into that thing. I think two of the lines probably go right in from the front axle. The rear, I'll just have to figure out how to downsize that a little bit fit, but it shouldn't be a problem if I can find the right adapter, which I'm sure is out there somewhere. So um, yeah, let's jump right in and see if we can get some work done on this thing. Well, you remember how I mentioned that little old lady that walks by and gives me grief about the sailboat not being in the water? She would go nuts if she saw how slow I'm going on this Jeep. So I've just been keeping the garage door closed a lot of the time to spare me the agony of having that little old lady give me a hard time. However, I did want to show you, in fact, I'm going to pick the camera up here for a minute and, and we're going to have a close look at this. So bear with me. I'm going to pick you up for a second. All right. Well, this is why we do projects like this because um, A, they keep us from going crazy from our work week that we've been through with customers and employees and hackers and all that trying to make my life miserable. But B, at the end of the day, when you get done with something that you've done yourself, cleaned this thing up and repurposed it or refurbished it, doesn't that look nice? And what a true sense of accomplishment you get from doing something like that yourself. I mean, I could have bought a new fan and had this be all red or something, but um, I hope the light's not shining on it too much, but boy, that blue with the metallic stuff in it looks really good when it's really new. So I think that turned out all right. I think it's gonna look good. I just gotta get some bolts and we'll get her back on the water pump up there.
Well, once again, I'm kind of stymied here. So a couple things I'll mention. First of all, you remember how they always say all those cliches like measure once, cut twice, measure twice, cut once, whatever. I said that the wrong way. That's why it gets screwed up. It's because you do it the wrong way. Measure twice, cut once. You can always cut something shorter. You can never cut something longer. So I was dealing with the vacuum line from the fuel pressure regulator up here to somewhere on the throttle body. And I ran into two little things. First of all, there is a vacuum connector on the back of the throttle body plane here. And I'm gonna pull the end off of it. There's a cap over it. And this is the cap. This is the size of my hose and, and the fitting size that we expect to find for our vacuum. So you can see they're fairly different in size. And on the front of the throttle body, there is another connector right here that is small enough to fit the vacuum hose. If we wind up using that, then I cut too much slack off my hose because I thought I was coming around here to the back before I got the end off and measured it. So what I should have done, pulled that cap off, realized there that that was gonna be too big before I did any cutting on this, but oh well. And then, so I was like, all right, well, let's look at the documentation and make sure that those two vacuum tubes are the same. The one on the back, this is the view of the back of our, of our throttle body and our power, power fuel injection system. And this is this arrow's pointing to this idle air controller. That's a, a electrical connector right there. But behind it, not really visible in this picture, is that bigger fitting. And you can see there's no arrows. There's no description of what that fitting's for. We turn to the front view. This fitting right here is the fitting right there on the front. This one tells us what this one is in the center. That's our PECV port full-time vacuum, but it doesn't tell us what that one is. I, I really think it is going to be full-time vacuum, but I would like to verify that before I go plug in my fuel pressure regulator into it. If that is the one we're going to wind up using, then I'm sniffing the tears because I cut this off and I need this extra 10 inches to get me around the corner nicely to do that. So now my cables or my hose is a little bit too short, but that's not the end of the world because this is also doubles as your squirter hose from the windshield washer reservoir up to the windshield squirter thing, which goes right in the center here and kind of squirts out of both. It never does a great job, but it squirts a little water up on the windshield where hopefully the wind will blow around and so forth. And that goes through this grommet that we put back through the firewall right about here. So you can see this will fit through that grommet that is the same tubing that we'll use for the windshield washer. So if I need to buy another package of this tubing, it was like four bucks or something, that's not a big deal. And I believe I got that from Summit Racing. It was this little um, Pico accessories thing. And it's just 3 16 vacuum slash wiper tubing. So it is the same tubing, whether you're using it for a vacuum hose or a windshield washer squirter. So that's okay. So. I, gotta, I do want to call Edelbrock or Summit Racing's technical support and ask them about this because this is one of those places where I don't think you want to take a chance that you're not plugging into the right kind of a port there. Next of all, next along the lines here of things that are stymieing me today, this is my bigger of the two brake connectors that came up to the old master cylinder. And you can see the size of this connector right here, and that's gonna go into this back connector to run the back brake lines. And if I pull this connector out of here that came with the proportioning valve, you can see those are fairly substantially different in size. There's a little bit smaller connector on this end where it went down into the brass proportioning valve that Jeep put on here. But even that one, I'm still a little too big here. So I'm trying to find a way to reduce down probably at least from that size fitting down to this size fitting so I can get into the proportioning valve and then I'll cut this one off and put that same size fitting on there or whatever and and then re-flare that. So that's the part that I'm gonna need to get borrow a flaring tool from. So can't really get my brake lines hooked up. I have um, got the fan back on there now. I will tell you that on the old fan, there was a spacer that was about two inches, I don't have it around here, I think it's over on the bench, 
but it was about two or two and a half inches of a spacer that went between the old pulley and the fan so the fan is closer to the radiator. I don't know yet what my radiator configuration is going to be because I am planning on putting a new radiator in here that's as, as big honking as I can get because I've always hated how hot these things run. I want to make sure I got plenty of coolant capacity. So between the radiator and the new shroud that comes with it, I'm not really sure what our distance our fan will need to be yet. So I didn't put that spacer in, but I might need to. So we'll revisit that if we hit the point where we feel like we need to. I, do, I did find my old alternator over there. It's really gnarly looking and nasty and old and beat up, so I'm not sure I'm gonna put it on there and make it a new alternator. And I have not resolved my steering pump, my power steering pump issue yet. Remember, I kinda have the old one that is of questionable integrity. I have the new one that I bought that doesn't fit right. The bolts aren't long enough and the fittings are pointed the wrong way. So I got several things I gotta research. Radiator, how to get vacuum out of this thing, how to get my power steering pump sorted out, and whether or not I want to do a new alternator. And then um, and that will be it, and my brake lines. So a little bit of shopping, a little research is on the docket for the coming days here. And um, besides all that, I'm in the middle of a huge, gigantic project at work with all my guys kind of scattered to the four winds. And we've been, I've been working day and night and night and day and I'm, I haven't really had much time to get out here and work on this thing. So I'll probably leave this here for now and I think I got maybe one or two more works weeks of hardcore computer biz stuff that hopefully we can get wrapped up. But I will, will be doing my research and I'll let you know what I find on vacuum. Now honestly, I don't really know what you're putting a vacuum line to the fuel pressure regulator for. unless. It has something to do with as the vacuum comes on when you close your throttle body. So, you know, obviously when your throttle body is open, you're going to be running not very much vacuum because you're letting plenty of air through. But as you close that down, that's when you're going to start to pick up the vacuum. That's the concept with your brake booster is, you know, you let off the gas, it builds up the pressure. It assists the brakes while the throttle is off is when you get your vacuum boost. And it may be doing something similar in the fuel pressure regulator here, meaning it might be kind of pulling the, the diaphragm up to mostly bypass everything back to your return line when you let off the gas, instead of kind of forcing the regulator to allow it to bypass. So that's probably what it's doing. Um, if I do get someone on the phone, I'll kind of ask them about that and see if they can educate me a little bit. And what I learned, you'll learn. So there's that and that's it for now and I'll see you next time around. Thanks for watching and um, don't go anywhere. We are going to get this Jeep done one of these days.